Hi everybody, I'm Kathy Wing, Artistic Director of the Randall Theatre Company, and this is Ghost Lighting Theatre in the Dark. We've got something pretty cool for you tonight. We're taking a look back at the Randall Theatre Company's production of The Picture of Dorian Gray from 2016. This was a show that featured a great cast along with some stunning visual effects and an original music score. The result was a truly chilling tale of friendship, betrayal, and murder. But before we get to that, I want to update you on where we are with the new space. Last week, we revealed the place we're looking at to be the new home of the Randall Theater Company. It's part of the old Howie's Complex, and it's right on Main Street in downtown Medford. We made some great progress this week and hope to be finalizing the deal in a few days. We're also planning the first Randall show to be performed there. It's called Breaking Up Broadway Style, sort of an ode to social distancing. More details on that at the end of the show, including the show dates and an announcement about who's in the cast. Right now, it's time to see what happened when we got some of the cast and production team of The Picture of Dorian Gray together for a reunion. And you'll see why, even after four years, this is a show they can't stop talking about. I am here with the cast of the Randall Theatre Company's production of The Picture of Dorian Gray. And uh, so everybody wave, say hi. 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 <laughs> and um, the, the reason we got all these wonderful people together, uh, this was a really special show for the Randall Theatre Company. And um, in a lot of the other interviews that I've been doing for Ghost Lighting, the picture of Dorian Gray kept coming up as, as a favorite project, a really impactful project. So we thought it would be great to get some of the, get some of the cast, as many of them as we could, and, uh, and some of the other folks involved in the magic, because it wasn't just the actors, it was, it was the set, and it was the artwork, and it was the music, and it was how everything came together. And so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that. But the first thing I would like to do I would love to go around and have you all introduce yourselves and tell us um, what your part was in the show. Let's start with David. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is David Alonso Rodriguez, and I was in charge of a portrait effects for the picture of Dorian Gray. Hi, I'm Brittany. I played Maria Bella in uh, the picture of Dorian Gray. I um, had a very famous... A uh, death scream. I don't know if any of you remember that, but it was very, very fun. Hi, I'm Mia Gaskin. I played Victoria in the picture of Dorian Gray. Hi, my name's Alex Bringer, and I played Ellie Gardner in the picture of Dorian Gray. Hi, Ryan Ingalls. I was uh, Alan Campbell. I think it was in the picture of Dorian Gray. <laughs> <laughs> Alan! <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, uh, I'm Nico Hewitt, and I played Dorian Gray in, in the show. So. All right. And, 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 help, and did the set design uh, with, uh, with Tony um, for the show as well. Well, my name's Tony Holly, and I, I had the uh, extreme pleasure of directing an amazing cast and picture of Dorian Gray. And cool. Ashley Medeiros, I created the soundtrack for the crazy show that it was. I had to make quite a few different changes along the way. I, I'm not surprised, and, and yeah, we are definitely going to talk about how that all went together. So, um, like I said, this is a show that so many people have mentioned as something that um, was one of their favorite things to do, um, had, had a lot of meaning for them, and so I would really like to know from you all, and just feel free to, to chime in, um, uh, we don't need to be polite here. And so just feel free to chime in and tell us why, why that was. Um, well, I'll start it out. Um, I think the thing that ended up being the most special for uh, not only myself as a director, but for the group was, I think it was the first show we had all experienced that Robin didn't come ha have to come and fix it. <laughs> that, that was our goal right from the beginning. Um, and we did it. I think his only note, when he came in to watch was 
pick up your cues, which, you know, that's legit. Um, so, you know, that's a, that's another in the cap of all of us. Uh, it's a it's a challenging show. It's not done very often in any format. So we had we didn't have a lot of, of uh, rest points because it hadn't been done that often. So we were pretty much flying blind. You know, we we looked at script over our many many uh, table reads and yeah. together decided what was going to be left in. We were going to uh, need to take out. <laughs> uh, for me, one of the really powerful things for me on this show was, well, I'd never played like a just full on bad guy. Like I'd played comedic bad guys, but I'd not played just a villain villain before. Um, uh, and so there was a lot of fun in doing that for this show. Um, <clears throat> and then like on a show level, so like that was like for me personally, but like for on a show level, it was just like how much, how well the whole cast just like stepped to the plate as a whole on the show was just so much fun. I mean, it was like, it was like all of our like table work rehearsals were so great. Cause like, well, and Tony would remark about it too. It's like Tony would like get us, like get us started on it. And then like, we just go with just like <laughs> all kinds of stuff. And, and, and just like, I know, uh, <clears throat> Lynn Dutra would have remarked about it uh, if she could have joined us on the call. But like one of the things that she would remark about with Tony was that the two of we like we'd take a break, and like they'd step away, and then everybody would still be talking for the whole break about more character stuff the whole time. Well, so, that, that you know, Nico said our table reads went past rehearse because we go okay, rehearsal's over, and some people would leave, but then the guys would just stay there and talk and talk and talk and build and. And we go to the bar and talk and talk and, some and, more. Um, <laughs> it was. I remember it was. I don't. Might have been the first or second rehearsal that one that we had with Susie and Nico, where um, we did the the breakup. And for a first rehearsal, it was so intense, so real, that by the end, they actually had to kind of separate themselves, that they had to go, I still love you. We're good, you know, because it, <laughs> that was one of the first rehearsals. So I knew at that point, yeah, um, it, it was going to be intense. Well, one of the big challenges for the show is much like in Oscar Wilde's book, most of the drama, most of the violence, with the exception of uh, Nico and uh, Jeff's little scene, most of the violence happens off stage. Most of the, like, the extreme stuff happens off stage. So we as actors had to spend a lot of time discussing all the relationships off stage so we could come back on and it would actually be cohesive and make sense. And when you say, oh, that character shot himself off stage, the audience cares about it. So Mia, your your character was um, pretty much the sole survivor of of the um, of the cast. So, yeah. um, so tell me, tell us about what that was that was like for you. Well, it it was really interesting because I feel like, especially at the Randall, all of the other shows that I had done had been these like musical comedies, and so here to come into this show. Not only was it a, a dramatic piece, but it was also like a horror. You know, we were we were killing people and murdering. People were getting murdered, and the scream and the the, the you know just sort of it was frightening. Um, but yeah, for me, it was it was a really different kind of experience because um, it was it was a whole new kind of character. It was a, it was kind of a bitter, jaded character who wasn't really all that likable and who was, uh, even by the, the peers, you know, was considered to be sort of a frosty bitch, you know, I don't know if they ever actually said that or not, but <laughs> it was implied. It was implied, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so I think that for me, like, I tend to really, I tend to really, like, somehow fuse with whatever I'm doing during the project, whether it's something about the character or the people involved or, you know, the, the story, all of it. So there's something about the process. I think we all do. We kind of fuse with whatever project it is that we're doing. And for me, this one was, was really challenging because um, it, it, it wasn't a fun character to play and it wasn't a fun kind of show where it was just like, yay, we're going to sing and dance and have fun and, you know, tell jokes and make people laugh. And, 
uh, you know, I, for me, it was just, it was a huge challenge because I felt like I had this sort of responsibility to, to be this, the last one telling the story and sort of the last one alive. And it was an intimidating process for me. <laughs> so, um, but I'm really grateful that I had that experience and I'm really grateful to have worked with all of you guys and I miss you all. It's really good to oh, see you guys. You too, Mia. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I, I remember like what Mia was just saying of how, you know, it was very, it was very emotionally exhausting. Like I remember at the end of each show, we were all just exhausted just because, I mean, it was so serious and there was yeah. so many different moving parts to stuff. And like, Nico, I remember at the beginning of the show, you'd always be like, okay, just so you know, I love all of you guys. Yeah. Oh. Don't pay attention to what I'm about to say. And then at the end it was, I still love all of you because I mean, it was just some of the things that Dorian, I mean, all the things that Dorian does is terrible. So, you know, we were all definitely emotionally exhausted and it was definitely, we poured all of our hearts into mm -hmm. everything. And then just as our rehearsal process grew, that just kept building on. So I think that was a big factor for the reason why we kind of all soared so well together through the show. Coming up, we'll talk about the artwork, the special effects, and the original music used in the show and hear from the guys who created them. But first, this is a conversation that happened before we started the actual interview in which our artist, David Alonso Rodriguez, confessed something he thought about doing with the series of Dorian portraits. Well, be careful what you wish for, David, because we're about to make your Dorian dream come true. Alex, what's my official title in the play, Bill? Oh, you? Um, yeah. You are... I forgot. Portrait effects. Portrait effect. Ooh, fancy. Oh. Portrait effects. I know, right? Uh, when was that? Yeah, I didn't. I don't. I think I didn't want to be listed as video editor because I'm like, that's not right. I, I have a. I have a very, a very niche part in the show. <laughs> um, Portrait effects. I beg to differ. It was. I was gonna say. I would have part. to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah only very the important. Particular character. You were the title character. You were the portrait. Yeah, you I were the, the portrait. portrait. There we go. Oh, that's a <laughs> portrait. But at one point, I did think about editing my own head on it. So when it flashes through, <laughs> you just see that. Holy shit. That would have been amazing. Yeah, it's, it's my, little, my little cameo in the, in the show. Well, I mean, if John Wayne was willing to layer the Wilhelm scream into Dorian's death rattle, you could have done that. No one would do. I do want to talk about how the, the artwork and the music, I mean, those those things played key roles in in this show. So let's start with you, David. Talk, talk a little bit about the um, the artwork, how that came to be, and, and your your uh, your process on that. Yeah, so um, I have <clears throat> I have a history uh, with prop design and specifically visual art design. I was pretty fresh out of college. I think we were like, what was it, Nico? Like a year and a half or something like that. A year and a half, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Um, and and he approached me about doing doing the artwork. And I was like, oh, okay, so it's you know, it's a story I'm a little unfamiliar with, but I, I think the part the part that really egged me on to do it was I'm like, oh, good, I get to d take a photo of my friend and just mess with it, <laughs> and just mess with it any way that I see fit, and it's gonna look great, and it's gonna be a fun time. So, um, yeah, so I started working on it, and um, I didn't have a lot of Photoshop experience. I had some in college. Um, so I was learning while I was doing, I, you know, I was, I, it, the only reason it took me so long to, to get the final products was I was trying so hard to get the, like the effect that I wanted, the kind of like that painting effect, that kind of like ripple canvas effect. And then, um, a couple of them, they wanted me to push it farther and farther. Just the, like the grotesque, uh, mannerism of like how he looked and all the things he had done to himself that were taking uh, place in the portrait. Uh, my favorite one, which you can show, is actually called I Tuttle Nightmare Dorian, which is the one where he, it's, it's his skin and everything is just stretched and like his eyes are these big hollows and almost has this like pig snout that I unintentionally oh. 
<laughs> main. Like that was my favorite one. And like being able to know that that one was gonna be the one to flash um, in a series of photos made me really, really happy. My favorite <laughs> thing about this, sa- about this same image, the final image, but, and specifically, I, like, I still remember it verbatim, was the day that I showed the cast that final image that David did that I night. remember that. And it was, because I, I, everybody was sitting in the seats, and I yeah. had the TV thing set up, and I was like, here's what this one was, and they'd seen that one before, and I was like, and then this is the last image that he stabs at the end. And, like, there was, like, a collective gasp from everybody. And, like, everybody stood up from their chairs and everybody walked towards the portrait to look at it closer. It was, like, a uniform thing. It was, like, what? And, like, everybody got up and walked over to it. It was, like, it was so great. And, and like, and that was, like, you know, and it was, like, right before we were about to do it. So it was just, like, that awesome, like, kick to get us like even more excited to do that show which was like uh, yeah but then that that last sequence with the final image and then the stab sequence and all that stuff yeah like it always got like a gasp every night and i was like uh, yeah it was so great (laughs) because yeah to, to, to go from the earlier photos and then like the later photos where like half your like skull is missing and your hand is lopped off like it just yeah so those were some of my favorite parts were just were just really seeing and even to this day, I can I can I can think of a million ways. I'm like I can do that so much more better now. But I think I think but the most rewarding part was yeah because I lived I lived in Eugene at the time, and so the most rewarding part was seeing all you know not only my hard work but all the hard work of everyone together, and and what really because I, I I didn't know much about the show. I knew like bits and pieces. I don't know. I I also felt like. Uh, like semi-famous because a couple people including uh, my now girlfriend Megan um, like approached me and like you're the guy who did the picture right and I'm like yeah 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 <laughs> like it's not a big deal like I just did it really was a big deal the portrait mm-hmm. I, I've said it before the portrait very much was its own character so that mm-hmm. reason that last night we got that final reveal was so big for all of us is it was the final piece of the puzzle, the last character getting all their lines and getting all their blocking and it being in. The show existed. One of the things with the portrait especially that I feel like was a big thing was that it was trying to figure out how to make it work and being terrified every night and crossing everything we could to make sure it would actually work. Yes, there was one night gonna get disconnected is some yep. is the blue screen gonna pop up is something not gonna go at the right time or you know i just remember it being this like thing of like please have the portrait work please have the portrait yep. work because the show's around the portrait the portrait doesn't yep. work and yeah we had a whole system of like hooks and wires oh and stuff god to get it working there was one night where me, me and megan we had to like do try and get it on before the lights came up and that mm-hmm. was we were always like okay, counting down our heads like hey we have 10 seconds to do this let's go and then it would just some nights it just you know wouldn't work or it would hang on wouldn't hang quiet right we're just like okay it's fine go <laughs> and just well, cross and I, that it would I remember stay up. there being like a sheet that we'd have to put over it and it was mm-hmm. like oh my god if the sheet falls off early then like yep see what it is or oh my god it's not going to be set up yet so the picture was definitely its own little role that we had to Mm -hmm. make sure it would go without a hitch every night Um, i need to get going but it was so really it was really great to reconnect with all of you and um and bring this back up it's been a minute since i've thought about this process and so it was really cool to just kind of like dive back into that time and you know just relive some of these memories I I wish I could stay longer, but I have to say hi to my husband before I go. It's good <laughs> to see you. Him from us too. Yeah. Absolutely. Bye. Have fun, yeah. guys. Please have a good stay safe. As we've been talking about the artwork, and another thing that was unique about this show was the original music um, that Russell put together. So I would love to hear a little bit from Russell about. Just tell us about it. Uh, yeah, it. Some of the music had actually been around a little bit before then, and I show it to my mother, just going, does this sound cool? And she's like, yeah, that's cool. And then there was a point where I started getting into orchestration. I started adding string horns to the music that I was writing. So I was figuring out how to convert my guitar playing into strings and horns just for fun. And she went, what if we did music for Dory Drake? 
that would be a different challenge. I've never orchestrated a, a show before. I've written music over the years, but trying to do that was a good challenge for myself. Gone. Am I able to create a music for a show that has multiple different scenes? It's different characters. It needs the themes. Yeah, timelines where I had just three different time periods. So I was like, okay, what's good for the '80s? Okay, like synth pop, so clean guitar, like electric beats, a little bit of synthesizer. Sure, that's great. And then we go into the '90s, and you've got kind of the hard rock grunge thing. I'm like, okay, let's some change some mind. Try to something that sounds that is ripping them off, and we get in the 2000s. popular at the time. Nickelback. So I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll try to make things that sound appropriate for the time period. I think I did a pretty job. I listened to them, but it's been a while to listen to them, and I just, those are actually pretty good little songs. <laughs> <laughs> we started talking about doing themes for individual characters when there was kind of monologue actions, or we're going to get introduced. Okay, we're going to need an intro theme, we're going to need an outro theme, we're going to need during the like the drum section, there are three different parts where people come out, they're talking, and Brian come out, they're me. Everybody's coming out with different things so on. Okay, I need some like industrial, like noisy stuff that, that's gonna make the scene even more uncomfortable. Nico sitting there, there's a great engine arm, <laughs> having a bad trip. And and then we started heading a long way, going, okay, like, what if we have a little thing here? Or we need to break this down, we need to extend it. So like, I had to constantly go back and add pieces. I, I definitely enjoyed creating it for it and just going back after not going to it for quite a few now. I just went, it's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, you know, lucky to have him, you know, and it was it was a really good collaboration uh, for the two of us. You know, I could come home and say, "Well, this is what's going on, honey. Can you, can you give us a little bit more?" And bless his little, he, he did exactly what I did, and and um, and it was my uh, like like portrait another character. The show would definitely not have been what it was without David's artwork and Brussels music. Coming up, some final stories from behind the scenes. But right now, life being what it is, not everyone involved with the show could be there for the reunion. But some of them were able to send their greetings to the rest of the gang. Let's take a look. Now, life being what it is... Here to say hello. Hope y'all are doing well and staying safe. I'm just uh, sorry I can't be there and wanted to make a quick little snippet to say hi. Um, one of my favorite things about working on the picture of Dorian Gray was that for the Randall Theater at the time it was such a big risk and it really pushed all of us as uh, creators and performers um, in a really cool interesting way and I think it pushed our audience too. Um, and also just how invested we all were in the process with Tony and with everybody and especially watching the main four just really dig deep into those characters and building that past 20 year history. It was really awesome to, to watch and inspiring. And um, I try to put a little bit of that into each show I do um, because it's really, really good character work. Um, 
let's see, uh, Tony was such a great leader. Uh, I really appreciate all that she did and uh, taking this risk and also pushing all of us to be better performers. Um, oh, I should say I played Christina um, and ensemble. One of um, Christina was one of Dorian's lovers toward the end of act one. Uh, we used to joke I was one of the few that survived the show. But yeah, just everything really came together really, really well in terms of who was in it and the script we had and our director. And also, of course, the, the technical aspect with having a painting that actually shifted on stage with David's great artistry and um, carrying a really heavy TV screen. So I hope you guys are doing well. Um, thanks for a great experience and um, stay safe, wash your hands and yeah, have fun. Bye. Hi friends, this is Brad. Um, uh, I'm sorry I couldn't make it to the reunion. Um, uh, I love I love the show. I love Dorian Gray a lot. And hard to think it was almost four years ago that it came out and, and we did it. It's It feels absolutely like yesterday. Um, uh, I love the show because it like, you know, made me push my boundaries as an actor. And I hadn't really done that before um, in that direction, I think, playing a really mean, abusive character. And I had to learn on the fly the dangerous act of um, improv stage combat, which I, I, it was a challenge, um, but I had to die and sometimes the gun didn't go off. And I, that's one of my favorite stories is how every night we would just try and do something different, um, just in case the gun didn't go off. Um, but yeah, have a great reunion and, uh, it was great to see you guys. Thanks. Hey there, everybody. It's me, John Olds. I played Henry Watton in the picture of Dorian Gray, and I'm so sorry I can't be there with you live, but being in Dorian was such an important show for me. It's still one of the, my favorite parts that I ever remember in my entire theatrical career, and I wanted to make sure that I got in on here somewhere because it wouldn't feel right just letting this celebration of one of my favorite shows that I've ever done go by without me saying anything about it. If there was one moment in the entirety of Dorian Gray that kind of summed up the entire experience for me. There was one point where the the four main dudes, I want to say, it was me, Nico, Jeff, and Ryan. We were like the, the four musketeers in that show, and a lot of effort and a lot of focus and a lot of time was put into the four of us being friends being this related group of school school friends and I just remember there was one time where we were shooting shooting where we were rehearsing the scene where we're all out at the bar essentially and we're sitting at this table and we all have our drinks that we're I think we made up our own separate vintages that I'm sure each of us had our own different drink but it had gotten to the point where we ran the scene a couple times, and then there was a, a, a pause called, or a break called, and we just stayed at the table. The four of us just sat there, chilled, and shot the breeze between ourselves, and it was almost like the scene hadn't ended. The four of us, just at that point, were so in a unit with each other that it just felt natural to be doing that. Just that feeling of we have actually gotten into character so deeply and so easily that even when a break is called, we're just still kind of the same. We have the same relationship to each other. That was a really interesting and unique dynamic that I've never seen or felt in any other production I've done. That was really special to me. <laughs> Again, so sorry I can't be there with you guys. I'm really glad that this happened for one of my favorite shows that I've ever been a part of. Hi everyone, my name is Kuga Boompa. I played Sybil Vane and Karen Oliver in the picture of Dorian Gray. Um, this production is still one of my favorites. Um, it was my first Randall theater production and it was a return to theater after an eight year long hiatus. Um, and I couldn't have asked for a better return to theater. The cast and crew are amazing human beings and I was so lucky to work with them. Um, I met some of my best friends um, in this cast. And my favorite memories are just all the times that we went from analyzing very intense character arcs and dynamics to making jokes and having fun. Um, 
Tony Holly, Robin Downward, and Kathy, thank you so much. Um, Robin and Tony, thank you for casting me. Thank you for making me a part of the Randall Theater family. It meant a lot to me. And Kathy, thank you for letting me reminisce about how wonderful this production was. I'm going to give a shout out to everybody in the cast. Hi, guys. Um, I'm sorry I missed... Um, I'm sorry I missed the interview. I was working, but I hope you all are doing well, um, and I hope life is taking care of you. I love you all, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>
like acted like his ankle was twisted on the stairs or something and like fell over. And then Brad's character goes to get up again. Dorian picks up the gun, walks over to him and just like cold heartedly shoots him in the head. And that's the end of that one. Um, our, uh, uh, our light runner for the show on this night, we had never rehearsed what happens if the gun doesn't go off, which we did promptly at the next show, uh, before the next show. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about that legendary scream. Let's- Can I interject? Are we uh, talking uh, one of or your sons will help? And I do have to drop out. We do, yeah, we do, have to, we do have to go. Uh, I want to say just one last I real quick help. thing. Um, oh. I just wanted to say that I uh, really appreciate everyone uh, who was part of this process because I am very humble about my work all the time. So I, n- I never saw what I did as very important, but to hear you guys talk about the, ki- the, the portrait taking on its own character really means a lot to me and my work. So I want to mm-hmm. take the moment to appreciate all of you and thank all of you. Yeah. I yeah. wish I could sit and have this conversation with everybody for the next like three hours. But. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. We still yeah. can't show about it. Isn't that weird? It was so lovely to see all of you. Yeah, so good to see all you guys. Bye, Nico. Bye, David. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye Dark. <laughs> all right, Brittany, your moment to shine. Tell us about it. <laughs> the scream. <laughs> yeah, well, I... So, okay, let's start at the beginning, shall we? Um, yeah, previously, I hadn't... I, it was actually my first audition with community theater in the Valley um, outside of college in high school. So I was like okay, I'm going to dive in and what a show to dive into. <laughs> but my first thought when reading that line is, it's just Maria Bella. She's just somebody who that Dorian um, has his way with, I guess, and then kills just in cold blood because he can at that point. And um, I remember reading the part where she runs off stage and lets out this blood curdling scream was in the script and I just remember thinking oh gosh my parents are going to see this my poor parents because <laughs> 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 they have to watch me like beg for my life and then die off stage so but aside from that I had I don't know I just had a lot of fun with it I remember there were some nights that I felt like it was more it was harder to do because I would run up the stairs and backstage everybody had to endure that loud horrendous scream and i told everybody guys i'm just gonna let it rip okay like a horrible scream and everybody's like all right we're fine you're good we'll cover your ears cover our ears it's good every single night i did that and then but there were some nights where like it was hard for me to get out of that mindset even because Mm -hmm. just staring nico in the face telling me like you're not gonna survive this night um was terrifying in of itself and then letting all that out backstage was just horrifying. I remember one night in particular I let it all that whole scream out and I just stood there like this for a couple minutes mm-hmm. and I was like okay I have to I have to move on I have to get ready for the next little bit I'm helping with so it it was very impactful just it was a really I thought it was a really great first like community theater experience for me. So thank you for all the work that you all did to put it together and for the roles that you all played. Um, everybody came together on this, and, um, and it, it's, it's one that's gonna be remembered for, for a long time. Thank you to everyone who was able to be part of our reunion for the picture of Dorian Gray. Definitely a good time. We hope to do more reunions like this for sure. So let's talk about breaking up Broadway style. We've got a great cast of singers, including Megan Kirby, Brianna Gowland, Jesse Sheeman, Janina Brown, Ella Diaz, and Ryan Ingalls. They'll be belting out the best in breakup songs from heartfelt ballads to upbeat anthems of independence. We'll get ticket information out as soon as we can. Show dates are October 2nd through 11th. And as we get closer to moving into our new space, you can help us with that with a donation of any size. Just go to the link at the bottom of your screen or click the donate button at randalltheater.com. And if you donate $20 or more, I will of course send you one of our trendy two-tone theater strong wristbands. As always, you can catch up on our ghost lighting shows anytime on the Randall Theatre Company Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time, but until then, we'll keep the ghost light on for you. Mm